Ladies and gentlemen, I'd, I'd really love to welcome you to this, this first screening of such a wonderful film. This is a wonderful opportunity uh, for me, the owner of this theater, to offer you something so special. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the time today to show you the full-length film, so we're just going to give you a little snippet, maybe just a little preview. I'm just really excited. Uh, I'd really like to thank uh, Mr. Rodney, the Rod Harrison, for putting together all this footage. He, uh, he really, without his help, we wouldn't be able to do such a wonderful screening today. Uh, well, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I, you will not be disappointed. This is such a wonderful experience. Uh, without further ado, I'd love to present the soon-to-be-released feature film, P is for Personal. Enjoy. <laughs> Boasting such revolutionary events at the end of the Vietnam War, the re-election of Richard Milhouse Nixon, and the rise of disco, the years between 1970 and 1979 constituted a decade of rapid change. Perhaps no one felt so acutely the upheavals this decade brought, as did the rock group Elemental P. Their career roller coastered over the span of four albums, two world tours, and three long years of alternating success and failure, marital problems, drug abuse, and yes, even death. Would you come in here? The, the Rod is making a, a movie. He wants hey. to do some, some interviews with us. I told him we'd, we'd talk about things. Sure. The thing about Elemental P is, uh, you know, it's, it's like when you're a kid, sometimes you say that, that part of the alphabet, you know? And uh, it, sounds, it sounds like that. Elemental P. Elemental P. So everyone's, everyone's got it up here, you know? It's more of a philosophy than a name. I mean, it's really the basis for all of our songwriting. Right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> This and other outtakes are the results of the tireless efforts of Elemental P's road manager, one Rodney the Rod Harrison. His attempts to archive the band's successes are housed on film reels, thought until only recently to have been destroyed or lost. Yeah, so, uh, I'm, I'm making this set of films for posterity's sake. Well, you know, I love the Lance, and I, I love the Elemental P, and I love the Chariot. The Rod loves everyone in this project, and the Rod, it's, it's for the future, it's for the future of American music, and not only for this band, but, but for the Lance, man. Fuck them. It all began in 1974 when Cherry and Lance met, fell in love, and recorded their first album, Motel California. It's most, mostly blackness. It was very dark. It was very dark. Black, black night. Yeah. We were in Minnesota, right?
We don't do that at Disney. <laughs> kicking, kicking Cherry out, out the door. I think Lenny is a very old soul, and I'm a pretty old soul, and I think, I think, you know, that it's likely that maybe we were sisters, or maybe I was his aunt, or... Or I, I was your dog. Maybe. Which would make sense. <laughs> it's a little joke that we have because I like dogs. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. How many of the takes do you need to make the songs? That's what I'm saying. Um, we usually call, call her one take Cherry. <laughs> And I just feel it, you know, and I, I think that's, when you're writing your own music and feeling your own music, you, you only need one take. One take, sure. <laughs> Nineteen seventy four was an extremely successful year for Ellen Murphy, and their debut album rocketed to the number one spot on the Pittsburgh Weekly Sun's music charts, as well as selling over seven hundred copies. But with success came money, and with money, the band's already severe drug habits escalated. <laughs> For the band, for the use of the band, they need to relax. They're very, very tense, and I'm their help. It's, it's I'm the rod, the rods, their help. So I've crossed the Quaalude and PCP. Lenny and I were a candle that burned too bright and too too hot, and, and you know what happens to candles that burn too bright and too hot? Blackness. After rehab and their remarriage in late 1974, Cherry and Lance began an ambitious rebuilding of Elemental P, launching their first world tour and releasing two new albums entitled Gossip and Apartments of the Holy in quick succession. But again, just when things began looking up for the group, disaster struck. Randy was such a great guitarist. Was. He, he was he was a very, very talented man. He was good at a lot of things. <sighs> Great at guitar. And a lot of things. <laughs> a lot. The night it happened. <sighs> Did I ever tell you? The last thing he said to me. He said, he said, Lance, are you going to do the laundry tomorrow? Am I going to do the laundry tomorrow? And he was like that. I mean, he was so giving. Yeah. And now, for him, for him it's just it's black. Randy's death rocked the group yet again. They were forced to abandon tour dates in Munich, Stockholm, Moscow, and even Osaka, Japan, leaving their die-hard foreign fans disappointed. Upon returning home to Pittsburgh, they hired renowned drug czar of Pennsylvania, Donald The Truck Masters, as their new lead guitarist. Not surprisingly, 
Drug abuse again reared its ugly head. Land spiraled downward, puffing every household product he could get his hands on. It was during this period that the band suffered its most embarrassing setback. On June 12th, 1975, Elemental P was playing to a sold out crowd at Chesty's Pub in Natrona Heights, Pennsylvania when all hell broke loose. Lance was arrested on charges of public indecency, inciting riot, as well as public drunkenness. You know, she, she looked so much older. I could have sworn she was at least 21. Well, I started an organization called Dachshunds for America, and my, my one-year-old Dachshund, Bella, um, is missing her rear legs. And she's become kind of a poster girl for, for the, the effort. You know, I call dogs land sharks. Because they bite. How did this land shark lose its hind fins? She was right. chasing after a ball and she got run over by a Chevy. And we've been a long way together. And I wouldn't be the woman I am without him. And, uh, I, you know, I still love him, but I, I found something that gives me a lot more fulfillment. <laughs> <laughs> But somehow, the group was not yet finished. Cherry and Lance remarried again in December of 1975, finally kicked their various drug habits and tried to recapture the Elemental P sound. They began with a live album, P Comes Alive, which was recorded during a series of concerts in the Rod's basement. The success of the concert series and their live efforts encouraged the group to compile a greatest hits album entitled G-H-I-J-K, The Very Best of Elemental P. Many record stores in Southeast Pittsburgh sold out of the album in the very first six weeks after its release. Bolstered by their renewed success, Elemental P mounted yet another world tour, including a concert in New Delhi, a concert that Lance, for one, was to never forget. Because if, if we hadn't have played that concert, I wouldn't have met Mahindra, <laughs> my spiritual teacher. <laughs> They have a philosophy over there in India that in the beginning of time, it all was just blackness. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all okay, though, in the end. The, the lands, the lands, he, he, he got into some other things. It's all okay for all of it, even that Indian stuff, it, it all relates back to Jesus, like Jesus said, back here somewhere in the back. <laughs> it, the kingdom's child. And, and it's, you know, what happens next for Elemental P, it doesn't really matter, because they're not going anywhere. I'm here to tell you. That because... Lance found Jesus in in the Indians. <laughs> they're, they're not going anywhere. It's they're. Without notice, the band called from India and canceled its remaining tour dates in Beijing, Hiroshima, Seoul, and the Red Rocks Amphitheater in Colorado. Aside from occasional reports of seeing the Rod in East St. Louis. No one heard from any of the band members ever again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I really hope you enjoyed our, our preview. Uh, the full-length feature film will be on order, available through the Elemental Web Ring and uh, at your music stores in the greater Pittsburgh area. Now, I don't know about you, but 
there's been a magic in the air all evening. And I haven't felt a, a tingle in my spine since, since 75. Because you know why? Because none of the rumors are true. That's right. For the first time in decades, Elemental P is back. Lance Lovelance and Cherry Lovelance Smith singing their really, really, really popular song, How Will I Survive? Let's hear it for Elemental P! Thank you for coming.